Hi folks, my name is Patrick Dangler. I am a senior program manager on the Internet Explorer team responsible for scalable vector graphics, SVG. Uh, I actually have a dual role in that I'm a member of the W3C SVG working group. And those two roles together uh, allow us to create for the developer an experience where they can write the same markup in SVG and have it render across browsers in the same fashion. And what I'm showing you here is an example of that that we've created for the uh, Internet Explorer Platform Preview Build 2, our own take on a tag cloud in SVG. And it's an interactive experience that queries Twitter for some information uh, about Internet Explorer. And as you notice, I've got elements of interactivity. I have inter elements of color, of geometries, of text, of opacity all which we built just with the spec in mind. And the great thing is that that same markup works the same whether I'm in Firefox or whether I'm in Chrome or whether I am in Opera, the four browsers I have on my desktop. And so that's very good for developers and users alike. And we benefit from the maturity of the SVG spec and how it's come so far, and we've been able to tune it such that there are few ambiguities. Uh, that same experience is available apart from developing your own content. We're able to bring content from existing sites, such as Wikimedia, as in this example. And in each case, again, we will see the, uh, the, the graphic render the same across all browsers. And those are great benefits for developers who really want to be thinking of writing the markup once and getting the experience to work without having to think about browser-specific details. But it's interesting because as we've gone through the implementation, we do notice some edge cases that can have effects for developers. And our process is that if that same markup doesn't work today, that we'll work through the working group to get that same markup to work tomorrow. So one example was when we were looking through the UN org chart that we have on the platform preview from the first preview, we had noticed that uh, we, when we wanted to add some interactivity, uh, we wanted to use the selector that you see at the top here, rect, hover, fill, yellow. And what that will do is as you hover over a rectangle, it will fill that rectangle yellow. Well, SVG has this great set of functionality also called use, which is fairly unique to SVG. And what it does and what it says in the specification is that it should be a deep clone of the object it's referencing. But it leaves a little ambiguity in terms of the DOM and style and things like this. So when we explored that same experience in other browsers, what we noticed is that each of them had interpreted that statement a little differently. So for Firefox, when I hovered over the rectangle on top or the rectangle they used, both highlighted. In Chrome, only the top one would highlight. And in Opera, both would highlight when I only highlighted the first one. So in our case of wanting to add interactivity to an org chart, we kind of stopped and said, we need to get this clarification in the spec. And that's exactly what we did. We took that back to the working group, and we're working on a resolution for that. So that's kind of a conversation about making sure SVG markup works the same tomorrow. And those are ambiguities in the spec that we, that we iron out. Then there's this other topic uh, that we've been working with in the working group called HTML5 and SVG. And this is exciting to us because it's very exciting for us to get into this world where web, developer, cause, well, web developers can take advantage of vector graphics right in our HTML page. And here I've developed a very simple HTML page and I've put an SVG graphic on the top, an interactive game I'm building in my son's picture, just kind of a fun little home page I'm building. And what we expect is as the other vendors get there and begin to HTML, implement HTML5 and SVG, that it won't render the blank content that they do today. So we're all looking forward to everybody getting on that, such that your same markup will work in HTML5 as well. So quick call to action. Uh, the SVG has a has feature method in the DOM just like HTML, and we'd like you to start using that to detect whether or not SVG is available. So if you're building your own pages, or if there are existing frameworks out there that are using SVG uh, and perhaps another technology to render vector graphics, or if you're working with a third-party tool vendor, 
what we want you to be thinking of is to use the built-in standard way of detecting features, and here we have the SVG feature, and if it exists, go ahead and put your SVG content, and if not, use your fallback, whether that be an image or an animated JPEG or what it might be. Well, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm.